SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey wants to land the plane. He should know by now that we here at the Voice of College Football are more than willing to help you, Mr. Commissioner, land the plane. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. We break down the game we all love each and every day with you. Best discussion, debate, and analysis based on your participation. Even if you don't agree with me, if you like the content, please hit the like button, share the videos, let people know that we are here talking college football every day. All right, of course, the SEC powers that be are meeting as they do annually in Destin, Florida at the SEC meetings. These meetings a bit more prominent than previous meetings because of the item on hand. Oklahoma, Texas joined the league in 2024. The league needs to determine a scheduling format, permanent rivals and such. So the formats would be one permanent rival in an eight-game season in which the other 14 teams are split into two groups of seven to be played in alternate years. Or, as we have previously discussed and thought that the SEC was headed in this direction, a nine-game season in which they've got three permanent yearly opponents for each school, and then the other teams rotate in groups of six from year to year. And again, the big uh, advantage to this schedule is that you play everyone in the league at least every other year. We have addressed in previous videos our scheduling model for the 366 format. So please check out those videos. We've left the links down in the description section below, but I'm going to post the graphics that we used in that video to show you the opponents that we recommend if the SEC goes to a nine-game schedule and the 366 model. We have not addressed the 177 model, so we're talking about just one just talking about one permanent rival for each team. So this is very difficult considering that most teams in the SEC have more than one legit rival. And I'm not talking about just teams that play within the conference. They can all be called rivals because they're all competing for a conference championship. However, I'm talking about historic rivals. So let's run through the teams in the SEC and I'll give my recommendation if there has to be just one selection for a rival and it's a difficult decision to make. Let's start with uh, the A teams. That would be Arkansas, Alabama, and Auburn. Of course, Bama and Auburn have to play in the Iron Bowl, and even though Bama has other viable historic rivalries with Tennessee and LSU, and Auburn does with the South's oldest rivalry against Georgia, it's got to be the Iron Bowl that's protected every year. For Arkansas, we're going to pin them with Missouri, and I know Hog fans don't necessarily love that, that they have better rivalries to a certain extent with Texas A&M. And from the time that the Hogs joined the SEC in 1992, the league has tried to pin Arkansas and LSU together until recent years. And of course, for a long, long time, Arkansas LSU played for the boot trophy on the final Friday of the season on Black Friday. But Arkansas and LSU have been disbanded to a certain extent in regards to that rivalry. They now play earlier. And even though there are better fits for Arkansas in regards to a designated rival, this is the one that fits looking at the entire puzzle for the SEC. So Arkansas and Missouri. Florida, Georgia, that's a gimme. They've got to play every year. Florida could be pinned, of course, with Tennessee. Georgia could be pinned with a number of teams, including, as mentioned, Auburn, because it's the South's oldest rivalry. Tennessee and South Carolina, I consider also to be Georgia rivals, but it's got to be Florida and Georgia there. Uh, as we go through this list, we're also going to note what ridiculous pairings the SEC has put together since 1992 just to ensure that each team has a designated non-division rival and the uh, format has not worked, and I have detailed that in a number of videos in the past why this format has been ridiculous. From a competitive standpoint, it's not worked, and just from a rivalry standpoint, considering that, let's say, Georgia does not play Texas A&M for seven years, but Texas A&M will play South Carolina every year under the current format. Okay, looking at Kentucky and South Carolina, we're going to put those two together. You could put Kentucky and Tennessee together on an annual basis. And fortunately, this scheduling format is going to do away with a ridiculous Texas A&M, South Carolina situation. I can't think of two teams, two schools that have less to do with one another in the SEC than Texas A&M and South Carolina. Yet they play every year as designated rivals. It's ridiculous. Fortunately, it's going away. For LSU, it's uh, Texas A&M. We're going to make that pairing. 
Of course, for LSU, you could say Ole Miss. That's a standing rivalry for generations and also LSU and Alabama. Ole Miss currently is a rivalry, and we put that in quotes against Vandy. But of course, the most obvious selection here is Ole Miss and Mississippi State. It's the Egg Bowl. It's one of the great rivalries in college football, so that's a done deal. Mississippi State really has no other rivals. And again, the SEC in its ridiculous format currently puts Mississippi State as a rival against Kentucky. Oklahoma and Texas, much like Alabama-Auburn, Georgia-Florida, have to play that's a done deal. For Tennessee, it's got to be Vandy, although there are options, of course, with Alabama. That's a great rivalry that we're apparently, if we get this 177 format, not going to see going forward. Tennessee obviously rivals with Florida and Georgia as well. Although with Vandy, Vandy, just be grateful that you are in the conference and you're still playing football and you're still somewhat viable and making all that SEC money and get to play these other teams and get your brains beaten in 55 nothing. Unless, of course, Clark Lee continues to build the greatest program in college football. Now let's get to the issues under consideration. Okay, Greg Sankey said he wants to land the plane. He's tired of circling the airport, got to land the plane. He made a lot of comments about the SEC being at the forefront of college athletics. And again, he wants to keep up that brand name, that reputation, that that approach of getting things done. And there's no reason to continue this debate, but we'll let you know, according to Sankey and others, these are the issues that are on the table. First and foremost, it's basically competitive balance. So consider this, that obviously when you build a schedule, you have to determine how good are these football playing teams going to be in the future. And we want to make a schedule that's as fair and not load up on one particular team and then make it an easy out for other schools. So you got to be looking at competitive balance without, of course, knowing what the future holds and how good these teams are are going to be in the future. So that's always an issue. And that's been an issue with the SEC since 1992. Auburn plays Georgia every year, and then they rotate against the SEC Eastern Division, and they've played in the toughest conference in college football. So Auburn's had it rough. Ole Miss, on the other hand, competing in the same division, for example, as Auburn, has faced Vandy every year. So the competitive balance issue in the SEC right now is exactly that, an issue. It doesn't make sense, has not been well formatted, and so the SEC wants to correct the competitive balance issue. Now on to the next issue of bowl eligibility. I find it amusing that Greg Sankey brings this up because this is a bit of an issue in terms of competitive balance, not within the conference, but within all of college football as we look forward to a 12-team playoff. The SEC is the best conference right now. There's no reason to believe that it's not going to be the best conference going forward. It has been for the last at least 15 years. So the SEC, in a sense, has an argument to say we can only play eight conference games because we're playing the toughest teams in America collectively. However, as we need to format the sport in a uniform way, nine games in conference would be great. It also is going to factor into something else we'll hit on in a second. But let's stay with bowl eligibility. Think about this. The SEC, unlike the Big Ten, The Pac-12 and the Big 12 play eight conference games, not nine. Therefore, there's an additional game there that is usually scheduled. Now, there are some teams in the SEC that go out and schedule some tough games, like South Carolina this season, playing Clemson, as they always do, but also adding North Carolina. So let's not discount this SEC haters that a number of teams in the SEC do go out and schedule an additional game to add to their schedule like Georgia did last season. They always play Georgia Tech. That's an annual out-of-conference rivalry, but they added Oregon. And Georgia usually does add a more difficult game in the non-conference schedule. They did not do that in 2023 because the Oklahoma series was canceled because they're coming into the SEC. But in terms of bowl eligibility, this is how this is taken advantage of by the SEC. So consider this. We're talking about either playing a conference game or not playing a conference game in which that slot is typically going to be filled by a lot of weak group of five and FCS teams. Well, the SEC is basically going to go 14-0 in that week against those teams. They might slip up. And usually if somebody slips up, it's going to be a slip up by a team that's not going to make a bowl game anyway. We've seen it year after year after year. Albeit we can make fun of Texas A&M losing to App State, but mostly it's usually a Vanderbilt 
who's only three and nine, two and ten anyway, they're not going to a bowl game and they lose to Middle Tennessee. So it doesn't even matter. But the SEC is typically going to go either 13 and one or 14 and 0 against all those teams in that additional non conference game. Instead of, of course, if it's a conference game, guess what the SEC's record is going to be? Do the math seven and seven. They're going to go seven and seven because they're playing each other. So they're going to go seven and seven. So that's six to seven less wins throughout the entire conference. So there's a possibility. And the SEC, we see flood the bowl spots every year. They usually get anywhere from 10 to 12 teams bowl eligible. One of the big reasons why? Well, they're really good and they win their non-conference games. But they're also really good and they get a fourth non-conference game against a cream puff. So they add six or seven wins throughout the conference. And so some of those would-be five and seven teams become six and six teams and become bowl eligible. So the SEC is trying to weigh... They've looked at models in the past, and Greg Sankey is telling us as of Monday that it doesn't much matter. It sounds like he's leaning, even though he doesn't uh, he doesn't want to go public with this because he doesn't want to sway the decisions being made by the schools. It sounds like he's a nine-game conference guy. He wants to go with a full nine-game conference schedule because he said that's not really going to affect us in terms of bowl eligibility. I'm sure here and there, every three or four years, a team from the SEC would not have made a bowl game because they would have been five and seven instead of six and six. The other issue is television revenue, and this is where it plays into this. The SEC wants a fair schedule. The schools are fighting for fair schedules. They're fighting to play their rivals. They have various agendas depending on their status in the league. And we're not going to go through all that, but you can just consider that various schools, different schools, have different agendas in terms of what they're trying to protect. Or in some ways, if they're a borderline bowl-eligible team like a Missouri, probably trying to get the easiest schedule possible so they can get to bowl eligibility more often. However, the interest of ESPN, the SEC's only partner now that CBS is out of the game, uh, moving on from 2024, that the SEC is tied at the hip with ESPN. Well, ESPN wants the most revenue. They want the most attractive games. So they are having a say in this. You can bet they are leaning toward better games, the better teams in the SEC playing each other more often. So they've got better inventory to sell to their advertisers and make their product more impressive and more valuable. All right, that's the thought about SEC scheduling. Please share these videos out on social media. Subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football. Best discussion, debate, and analysis based on your participation. Leave your comments below right here at the Voice of College Football.